to introduce to you Bear Bay. Nicholas Bear Bay is a 37-year-old transgender male. He holds two, to look out, he holds two second-degree black belts and a licensed instructional massage therapy. After he beats you up <laughs> on the dojo mat, we can put you back together on the massage table, and then he'll be more than happy to make you a fantastic cappuccino and discuss coffee and food there. At 37 years old, Bear is excited to celebrate his third main day coming up on March 25th. Please welcome It doesn't just mean that you live and function as your preferred gender, but it's sort of this notion that you become able to trick people into seeing you as your preferred gender. It brings peace of mind and security, literally safety, to those of us who pass. Anxiety and anguish to those of us who don't yet and might never. And I can't even speak to passing as a non-binary person, because passing reinforces gender norms. A cis male, who puts on lipstick and goes out in a woman's top is in for a nice evening as long as he's in the right neighborhood. A trans guy that does the same thing is going to get misgendered the whole time. First time I heard about passing was when I came out to my Starbucks manager. They were a gender queer person assigned female at birth, and they introduced me to the concept of queer as a good thing and to they them pronouns. I had found out that I could fund my top surgery and it was this deciding factor in whether or not I, I would transition. If I could get that surgery, I would come out, and I would transition. So now it's time to start telling people. So when my manager came in, I was like bubbling over with excitement, and I told them that I was gonna make an appointment to start testosterone, and they said, oh my God, you totally should. You could totally pass. I mean, your voice is already deep. Coming out, coming out sucks, right? Like. As a trans person, you tell people, and they ask questions, and they ask like these insanely personal questions, like about your genitals, and they ask, so if you're into dudes, and you become a, become a dude, does that mean you're gay? <laughs> you nervously explain things to your family. Some people reject you. Some people try really hard to remember your preferred name and pronouns. Strangers misgender you. Can I help you, miss? Your dysphoria gets worse before it starts to get better. Waiting for your hormones to kick in and second puberty to start, and oh my god, is that a beard hair? <laughs> and fuck, I hate my chest. I can't wear this shirt. I can't wear this shirt. I need a fucking shirt. <laughs> so you start studying, practicing, speech patterns, mannerisms, stances, the 
man spread. And <laughs> don't even get me started on society's expectations that women should take up less space than men. I'll be up here way past my time. <laughs> you learn all about the different fashion rules, various tie knots, which shirts get tucked in, which don't. You go on a never-ending quest to find pants that were not designed to fit your hip structure, but with the right belt, they might work. You learn to replicate a male hairline by sweeping your hair back and up. On the tough days, trans people hit social media, posting a selfie asking, do I pass? Or, I've got a date tonight, does, that, does this outfit make me look manly? <laughs> Eventually, hopefully, you hit the right combination and you pass. A stranger refers to you as sir, or the group of people you're with as guys or fellas. Joy, elation, euphoria hits. You rush to share with people the feelings, the swell of emotion that comes with being perceived as who you really identify as. Passing brings certain privileges, male privilege. If you've never experienced living as a female, let me tell you, it is an amazing thing just to be able to walk down the street and not have somebody comment on your body, your outfit, or the expression on your face. Yeah, yeah. One of the first times I passed in public, I had accidentally walked, I had accidentally followed this woman out of the same train car and down the same side street. I was just like walking to my car and thinking about what I was gonna make for dinner. The second time she nervously glanced over her shoulder at me, I realized I was making her uncomfortable. And I wanted to run up to her and be like, no, it's not like that. And I'm not like that. And I'm like, I know exactly how you feel. Instead, I crossed the street to give her some space. Passing privilege. White male privilege. I'm less likely to get pulled over than a black male, and my car is less likely to get searched. If I attend a protest, the people of color that also attend are more likely to be detained and arrested. Preach. Preach! I work in a catering company, and my coworkers are primarily Latino and African Americans. Recently, we all went out, well not all of us, but a group of us went out for a night of drinking. The next day at work, while we were nursing our hangovers and pretending to look happy about passing people their hors d'oeuvres, <laughs> <laughs> I mentioned how weird it was that of all the people in attendance, the waitress came up to me to say that if my boss, a Hispanic man, didn't get his shit together, they were gonna kick him out. And one of the sous chefs said, well, yeah, you were the only white guy there, dude. Clearly, you were in charge. <laughs> Passing privilege is what makes it possible for this five foot tall guy with the scruffy puberty stash to go out on a night like that and drink liberally, which I did. Because once I like break the seal, right, I know I'm gonna be okay going into men's room the trans guys out there with the smaller frames and higher voices, they're worried that if they go in the women's room, they're gonna get yelled at. If they go in the men's room, they could get beaten up or even sexually assaulted. And it's even worse for my six foot two inch tall square jawed friend with a five o'clock shadow that just won't quit. For her, going to the bathroom at work has resulted in customer complaints. So here I am, I pass his mail. Once a week, right after I shower, I inject testosterone into the fatty tissue of my lower belly. Three years and four months of doing that has changed my body shape, my voice deepened, my body hair thickened, and my, my face is trying really hard to grow a respectable goatee. 172 shots has made it so that I don't have to replicate that male hairline anymore. And that life-altering life surgery made it possible for me to go to the beach or just walk around the men's locker room. And yet, I still have people in my life who have a hard time remembering. I get yes ma'amed in martial arts class. I get called she or her by somebody who just wasn't paying attention. Not too long ago, my instructor called me my birth name in front of my class. People's jaws dropped. My friend Joe threw his hands over his face in just complete denial. He literally couldn't exist in that moment. Panicking internally, I tried to put it aside, thinking, 
okay, am I gonna get confronted after class? Is that big new guy gonna cause some shit in the locker room? Do I need to make sure that somebody's in there with me? Put aside, I finished the drill, the class ended. There was no confrontation or bullying, and my instructor came up to me to apologize. He said, you know, it's not about you or about how manly you look, it's my bad memory. And remember, Bear, this is really hard for the people around you. <laughs> so again, I tried to take it in stride, and I thanked him for apologizing, and then I tried to tell him how that made me feel, how people who didn't know I was trans now might know, how people who didn't know that name, which is a closely guarded secret, had heard it out loud, how he had outed me and possibly put me in danger. He scoffed and he asked why it was making it about me. <laughs> when it was clearly about him. A conversation about my identity. And he asked why I was making it about me and scolded me for having an emotional response because that's not what black belts do. That was the beginning of my realizing that as long as I interact with people like that, who have known me for a long time, I'll never be able to live as stealth, which is where you just don't recognize your trans status. So the next phase of my transition will hopefully bring me to a place where people, where I don't just pass, but where people will just address me as male. My next phase is to hopefully become one of the first trans people to openly enlist in the United States military. When I wrote this a couple of weeks ago, I wrote, no one's done it yet. And as of right now, a trans guy from Chicago is the first person to raise his right hand and swear into the army. It's not me, but it's history. We are making history. And I'm really excited to be a part of that history, but even more importantly, I'm really excited to start a life where nobody ever knew me as her. <laughs>